Configure Split Horizon Bridging in Microtik. In this video, configure Split Horizon Bridging in Microtik. First, it is important to note that there is a Split Horizon used by, for example, Distance Vector Protocols in order to prevent routing loops. What we will discuss and demonstrate in this tutorial is a Microtik Router OS feature in bridging and just like its use in routing, Split Horizon is to prevent bridging loops. So the basic idea of Split Horizon bridging is to make a traffic that is arriving over some port never be sent out in the same set of ports thus preventing bridging loops to happen especially if you opt not to run, for example, a spanning tree protocol. So in order to demonstrate split horizon bridging, I will set up these devices. I have a Microtik CRS, then I will have a Microtik Hub Mini, Hub Lite, and Hub AC Lite as our test clients. So we'll then proceed to create a bridge and add the corresponding port members. So we have Ether2, Ether3, and Ether4. We will verify the default bridge behavior. So we will verify from our test clients if PC1 will be able to communicate to PC2 and PC3. From there, we will configure split horizon and check the difference now that there is split horizon configured and check on our test clients so whether they can communicate to one another. And finally, we will discuss briefly and show the effects if split horizon is configured. So for our demonstration, so for this Microtik, so we have the CRS 326, so system resources. So this is a Microtik CRS 326-24G 2S+. Plus. For our clients, PC1, PC2, and PC3, so they are actually Microtik routers. So we have PC1 as HAP Mini. So 192.168.1.10. So that IP address on port number 1 is 192.168.1.10/24. Then for our PC number two, so we have a Microtik hub light. So the IP address is 192.168.1.20/24. So on Ether one interface connected to, so this should be connected to Ether three. Okay. So 192.168.1.20, our PC2 is actually a Microtik hoplite. And finally, for our PC3, so we have hop AC light. So the IP address for this hop AC light is 192.168.1.30, consistent to what we have in this topology. So connected on its Ether1 interface, but connected on Ether4 on the Microtik CRS. So we have our tasks here, create bridge and add ports to the bridge. So if you'll take a look, there is a bridge here, but this is not the bridge that we will create. So this is my bridge so that I will be able to manage the Microtik. So this is not the bridge, so just don't mind this bridge that is already created. So that is why if we take a look at PC number one, so if we go to tools and ping, and ping one of the other PC, for example, 1.20, that will be PC2, we would not be able to ping or to reach PC2 because on our CRS, we haven't created a bridge on the following interfaces, Ether2, Ether3, and Ether4. So let's go back in our CRS 3 to 6 and fulfill this task, create bridge. So go to the bridge menu, bridge tab, plus sign, and name the bridge. So we don't have any specific name. So in our example, so let's just name it as 
LAN. Okay, so we will stick with ARP enabled and we don't touch any settings in STP or VLAN. So mainly we will just add a bridge. So click apply and click OK. So we have the bridge now. Now is add the port members to the bridge. So we have Ether2, Ether3, and Ether4. So we go to ports. So again, don't mind this uh, bridge connect with all of the bridge port members. So plus sign, so Ether2, and the bridge will be LAN, the bridge that we have just created. So we will just stick with all of the default settings here, including hardware offload is check. So click OK, and we will also add the others. So Ether3. And it's on the LAN, apply OK. And finally, Ether 4 and on the bridge LAN and also default settings. So we now have three port members for our bridge. Next, we will verify the default bridge behavior. So now that the ports are added as a member of the bridge interface, let us see what's the effect. So previously, we don't have any bridge and our PC is not able to communicate to PC2. So this time, let's test again. On PC1, we go to Tools, Ping, and this is 192.168.1.20. So we will ping our PC2. So take note, we have tested just a while ago. Now, this time, when we click a Start, there is now a reply from our PC number Two. Let's do a check one more time. So let's go to PC3 instead. So this is 192.168.1.30. And let's try to reach 192.168.1.10. So 192.168.1.10. So click start. And yes, there is a reply from 192.168.1.10, which is our PC number one. So next, we will configure split horizon. So again, split horizon is used to prevent bridging loops, but you might take a look at this topology and you might say there will be no eventuality that there will be having a bridging loop since these PCs, although they are MicroTik routers, are not interconnected to one another thus to form a loop. But let us just proceed to configure split horizon and see what is the effect here in our topology. So the split horizon setting in MicroTik could be found on the bridge port members. So that means if we go inside, for example, Ether2, we will have the horizon setting. So that will be true if we go to Ether3, and that will also be true if we go to the Ether4 bridge port member so let's configure split horizon and let's have a scenario number one if you may let's configure the same value of horizon setting for each of our bridge port members so for example you could put here 50 so horizon value 50 on ether 2 and if we go to ether 3 so we'll have the same value 50 and on Ether 4, let's have the same value as well, horizon 50. So for scenario number 1, the horizon value are the same, 50, 50, 50 on our bridge port members. So let us see the effect. If we go to PC1, tools, ping. And let's see if we could ping 1.20. So a while ago, we could ping. So click start. And we don't seem to have a reply from our PC2. So let us see if we could reach PC number 3. And the same situation with our PC2, we could not also reach. Let's quickly go over to PC2 and confirm the scenario. So 192.168.1.10. That will be PC2 to reach PC1. So click start. And yes, there is no reply. And let's quickly 
do a ping on the PC3 IP address and there seem to be no response as well. So once we set the horizon value to be the same value for our bridge port members, so remember the split horizon prevents bridging loop in the sense that the traffic coming to this interface will not be allowed to exit the same set of interface. So now if the horizon value are the same on Ether2, Ether3, and Ether4. So that is why if PC1 will try to reach PC2, it is not allowed to exit on Ether3 or Ether4 because they are treated as on the same horizon, therefore thus preventing bridging loop, thus not allowing to exit these ports. So that is why PC1 and PC2 and PC3 will not be able to communicate to one another. So let's have scenario number two, wherein we still configure split horizon, but this time let's have a different value for each bridge port members. So let's stay put for Ether2 to be 50. Let us change instead the Ether3 to 60 perhaps. And our, okay, so that is 60. And on Ether4, we will change it to 70. So Ether 250, Ether 360, and Ether 4 is 70. So they are set with horizon but on different values. So let us check our PCs or our MicroTik if they are able to communicate or they will still be not able to communicate to one another. So let's go to PC number 1. So PC number one, and let's try to ping PC number two. And yes, there is a reply. And for PC three, and yes, there seems to be a reply. Let's go to PC two, which is, let's try to ping PC one. And yes, there is a reply. And for PC two to PC number three. And yes, there is a reply. So as observed, if we have a horizon setting, but the values will be different, so meaning to say we are treating it to a different horizon, so therefore PC1 is still allowed to exit on Ether3 or Ether4 because they are on a different horizon value. So one more or final scenario, what if the horizon value of two ports are the same? So let us say this is 50. So they are the same with Ether2. Ether3 is 50. And we will leave the Ether4 as 70. So let's do a ping test. So on PC number 1, let's try to ping the same horizon value. So there is no reply. But on the other port with the different horizon value, there is a reply. So on PC number 2, let's take a quick look. On PC 1, we are not able to have a reply from the same horizon. And for PC number 3, there is a reply on a different horizon value. So what are the other split horizon effects? So if you take a look, I remove the horizon first to emphasize that on Ether2, Ether3, Ether4, there is a hardware offload flag. Because this CRS326, although we are operating on the bridge menu, has a switch chip and actually is doing or is possible to offload the functionalities of the bridge to the switch chip. Okay, so that is why because of this, we have hardware offload and we prefer to have this hardware offload for better switching performance. However, once we turn on the horizon value or we put some values here, for example, 40 this time, the H or hardware offload flag will be gone. And that will be true if we will do horizon settings on other ports. Let's say 100 and let's have the, let's say 200 horizon value. So the hardware offload will be gone. So we could not make use now of the switch chip 
and any of its features here that are covered on the switch menu. So in this video, configure split horizon bridging in Microtik. So split horizon bridging is to make a traffic that is arriving over some port never be sent out in the same set of ports, thus preventing bridging loops. We have configured split horizon by going to each bridge port members and set a horizon value. As we have observed, if the horizon value is the same, then those devices connected to those ports will not be able to communicate. If the horizon value is different, they are allowed to communicate. It is also observed that if split horizon is enabled, hardware offloading will be turned off. We will have more implementation on split horizon in our future tutorials. I hope you find this video helpful and useful. Thank you for viewing.